All right, in this video series, we will show you how to disassemble and repair a Samsung SyncMaster 215TW that is having display problems. Uh, this particular one, when you uh, apply power, you get a very faint screen image, and it's very bad flickering, um, almost pulsating, and you can barely read the screen. Uh, that's one of the indications of a failure in the power supply board where the power supply is not able to put out enough power to properly drive the backlights and then the flickering is caused the power supply is attempting to restart over and over um, trying to get the proper voltages out so the power supply is restarting over and over and that's where the flickering is coming in. So we'll show you how to take it apart, do the power supply repair and repair your monitor. So first thing you need to do of course is uh, we, as we've already done is remove the uh, monitor stand and the power cable and your display cable whichever type you were using and set those to the side you need to turn the monitor over and lay it down flat there'll be a series of three screws across the bottom we will need to remove those set those screws to the side for when we're ready to reassemble the unit. Now what you do is turn the unit back over, lift the front bezel at the bottom and kind of lift up and it will start separating from the back of the bezel. Just kind of work your way around. bezel is held in with little plastic catches and we just want to say just kind of twist and flex the screen a little bit and the bezel will come off. Now leave the bezel in place and we want to rotate the entire unit upside down because the back actually is going to come off before the front does. We set the back to the side. The next thing we'll be doing is re uh, removing the RF shielding that covers the backlight plugs. Just push that to the end of the monitor and it will release off these two catches and then lift it up and it will release off of these two catches. Now you can see the backlight inverter plugs. Uh, these plugs are squeeze fit connectors so you need to depress the little clip and it will release then you can unplug the connector off of the board. Let's make sure you have all four of those unplugged. The next thing we'll need to do is on the opposite end there is the um, control cables that go to the front control and speaker section. There's two small cables on those. Again they are squeeze release connectors so you need to either get in there with a fingernail if you have it long enough or like a flat blade screwdriver and release that little clip on the top and then those will come right out. Like so. Now you can lift up this assembly, gently rotate it to the side. If you are a little bit, I guess, um, um, weary, you can disconnect this connector. Maybe if you're, if you're not familiar with doing the monitor repairs, you may want to go ahead and release this connector. There's little sque squeeze release clips on both ends and you can just release it. It will come off and you can lay it down flat. This is the power supply board that we will be doing the repair work on. Uh, it's held in place by a couple of screws so we will remove it now. This last screw also holds in place a little RF shield that goes over where the power plug is. You can just set that to the side also. Then you can lift up the power supply board. It comes off the two little clips on the end. And then we'll have another connector that goes from the power supply board to the video board. 
and on the video board end side uh, it again has a little squeeze release connector so you just reach underneath with your fingertip and squeeze and release it and now we have the board out um, visible damage to capacitors on the board uh, these two are quite evidently bulging if you can see on the video this uh, one closest to the heat sink actually has some of the electrolyte solution that has come out of the top of the capacitor and has dried and makes a little brown crusty film at the top um, indicating that the capacitors are bad um, this power supply board is an NB-20 board this is also the same one that is used in the 204, uh, excuse me, 214T uh, monitors um, there is two particular boards for this model uh, there is the NB20, and there's also a BN4400127B. We have the repair kits for both of the boards uh, available in our parts uh, part store. There are very different capacitors on the two boards, but the symptoms of the capacitor failure is the same. When the capacitors go out, it causes the power supply boards to exhibit the same symptoms. So if you have a 215 and you're having problems with it, the best thing to do is go ahead and open up the unit, look at the power supply board, compare it to the two that we have, make sure you get the right kit of the parts so that you can do the repair on it. Now we'll take this unit over to the soldering station, remove the capacitors, replace them uh, with the new capacitors, and get the unit back up and running.